recently elected as a Secretary General of the Coalition for Democratic Change. He, uh, what has he been up to? Tell him to put on the radio. Internationally, we'll talk more about that. And of course, you know, you can talk anything in Liberia with a Secretary General who was a youth league uh, chairperson of the ruling party who has now become the Secretary General in laptop politics. So, in the end, we'll delve into a little bit of politics. Wherever you're joining us from, just welcome to this interview. Thank you so much for joining us. Mayor Swiggy, how are you? <laughs> Well, thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Kami. It is my pleasing duty at this point in time um, to have the opportunity of receiving free information and similar for workers at the moment of the city. Compliments of the city. Many, many other things. The chair of you who have made it possible to be here, and that will say Mary Christmas. So it's very good, Mayor, and we also want to say thank you for such uh, engagement with uh, the media. Before we go ahead, yeah, in the, I'm sure you want to express your sadness for some of the lives and the lives of the people and the lives of the people and the lives of the people. What have you said about it? Well, there's a period not just within the we want to use this time, particularly for all of you, arranging for those of our citizens who lost their life within the middle week of the world year and out of the world year. We want to use this time to extend our deep tears for donations to each and every one of them. And even some of them who are currently out of the country. Or the Liberian diaspora, who also have. And I think I want to say we are very grateful for our Easter, and I think December is a very important month to me. Uh, almost like a month of completion, we are the day, the first month of January. Sometimes it comes with some difficulty. I want to use this time to be very grateful for this month. I want to see everyone 
that a dedicated responsible to see to you that the sources of heaven's cooling will serve as the precedent for many young persons as well. Because there is this stereotype of perception of young people that we only need to support and not to be given a responsibility for this program taking a conscious gamble to repose the communism. For me, the first milestone is allowing me as a young person to stay in place. In the second I will pick up here is with our challenges. In the last 12 months, we were able to introduce and sustain inclusiveness. What one year of inclusiveness? We were able to allow the young people build a capacity at the moment of the government. We were able to allow our workers from an international perspective to share our own perspective with our international colleagues. We were able to build capacity for national level where you would be aware that capacity building is a challenge in terms of value added addition to any work environment. We were able to send food on our staff to South Korea, South Africa, Israel, Rwanda, Japan, and India and China. If if uh, uh, if you were to be asked uh, to encapsulate the entire 2022. What would be that uh, milestone, one item that you would look back and be like, wow, I did it as a mayor? Well, in 2022, what I could say to you and that I want to do, one of the, the major achievements with all the characterization about the city they don't say we were able to convince the international colleagues to be hosting President Khan, the second African country to host the global parliament there. And we're working alongside with the Basel family, serving as a co chair on the Basel family uh, in the midst of the epidemic and challenges. So for me, that major thing was safety. Because there was this notion and this perception that the city was unsafe, the city was threatened by security and insecurity. The fact that we were being hosted, we were able to convince, we had several other cities around the world, very developed cities around the world, who were opted to be to be afforded an opportunity to lose this son. Mm -hmm. And Morovia were able to come true. For me, I think my greatest milestone was a change in perception in the international community. I led to not only accepting me and giving me the flesh shape to be hosting the global parliament of mayors and we host the cross session of mayors around the world. We were able to house them, we were able to house them donor funding mm -hmm. since I came in over the last five years. This was the only one that part from uh, the world that would be, you know, they were already made our own program. But to see on our own invitation, our own invitation, we were able to make a case. The international community were able to see through that. And today, we speak to you, we were able to bring back home a project that is clearly driven towards sanitation, also dealing with more climate change. Uh, two of our affected community um, focuses on erosion and sanitation westward and you could tell 
we're able to go for ourselves 200 pounds and 150 uh, wrestling uh, will be for both West Point and Liverpool. What will they be doing? Well, the more that we call the more grown project is basically focusing to trying to prevent the upcoming change in the West Coast and the Liverpool sort of a situation. So, you see, the mango, you know, when mango is very important, good prevention, it turns about. So, we think the way some of those things uh, around us, some of our citizens, uh, they make them internal display, some of their homes uh, get destroyed from sea erosion. So, what we're trying to do, how can we engage into prevention by uh, waiting in our lay meaningful way? So, there will be 200 trees will be procured. Those 200 trees, uh, three communities will benefit. We intend them to ensure that those trees will be planted. In those communities? In those communities. We will be in uh, West Point, Rikuta, and also the Somalia Drive when you have the Japanese fever. So those are major, uh, those things will also give uh, our residents an opportunity for a quick impact you know, service process that will give them a job and they, they will be trained and they will also be paid, uh, predicated on the successfulness of that project. Uh, looking at the base now, we will also have an opportunity to subsequently uh, be able to get uh, 2.6 million hours. So when is that project. expected to, sorry, yeah, go ahead, when go is ahead. that expected to uh, take place? What is, yeah, when is it expected to start? We already launched the project not too long. Uh, I think a couple of days ago that project was been launched. And then we'll give you the full details. We also allow the media to follow. Because even when our colleagues come here next year, in, uh, in the, that's one of our focus points of the project. The, a lot of our viewers will be very interested to follow through uh, the, uh, the more grown that are in our uh, pro project. Okay. Before that, 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 comes in, sorry, I yeah. want to take you back to the conference you, that is expected to be held in Monrovia. I know you talk about, you know, um, how you convince the people to choose Monrovia uh, despite all of the concerns of you know insecurity that is a good thing but how does the city of Monrovia benefit as a result of that conference well the city of Monrovia benefit in in many ways take for example you gonna have a conference that will have the attention of all the mayor of the world uh, basically, we're looking at close to 1,000, 2,000 plus persons expected uh, to be in, in our city. Wow. And too often, we go to something in Northern Europe or North America or America to participate in these conferences. But we were able to make a credible is a solid case for Africa as a whole. So the first thing, it opened the country to investment. If you have yeah. the mayor of New York, the mayor of DC, the mayor of Beijing, they will be coming. We also see an opportunity to showcase that will be a car, like, uh, basically like an extension of our bicentennial. We're trying to show some of the cultural value of do you have the kind of facilities to, to host them? I'm talking about hotels or uh, 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 these different recreation places. I know they, their coming will put money in the economy. They'll be able to have handlers, those playing sports and all of this stuff. But do we have the kind of facility to when it comes to lodging? Well, basically, we try our best. Uh, make no mistake now, Liberia has been a funding country to a lot of these international institution, the EU, mm -hmm. United Nations. So we have our international reputation. We also, uh, if sometimes people think it's comical to keep referring to, uh, you have 14 years civil, <laughs> the civil wars, yes. So all of those challenges have been projected, mm -hmm. but we cannot say because of those challenges, we cannot uh, put ourselves in a political nation to be able to project ourselves to help our people. We have the little, the little, uh,
facility we have here, our hotels, we have a community, we're working with the civil society, we're working with some government agency, we've been working with the president, the president himself have, uh, have endorsed, as we speak to you, the president will become the, uh, he will become the guest speaker of the opening session. So he will be speaking on the guest speaker at the opening session. So we're going to try to work with the little, you know, with the little facility we have, we have here, but with a huge expectation, because normally when the global parliament, we were in Bristol, we were in Bristol, uh, we were in Poland, we were in Germany. So whenever we go to places, Italy, it gives an opportunity to that city, like a, like a spotlight would be placed on the city. So we know that some of our colleagues that will come here, some of the businesses that will come here, mm -hmm. some of the people that will have interest, they can see our country, we can be able to showcase that Liberia has some cultural value, where, can, you know, where we can be able to use as a way to you know, the promise and investment in, in our economy. Inadequate funds to run the city of Monrovia is one of the problems you've been faced with. Do you care to tell us what have you done in terms of uh, running the city with uh, the limited resources? How did you manage? Well, uh, the city is engaged with burning constraints, uh, inadequate resources, the stop on a general of its burning constraints. Everywhere around the world, sometimes when I sit up with my colleagues and I tell them, what I have on sanitation, sometimes it becomes laughable and people think that what are we? But I can understand it's not, it's not deliberate, uh, like you as a woman in a country, mm -hmm. and uh, the country as a whole has, uh, the president is uh, doing his utmost best to be able to test you. Everywhere, it's, everywhere we have a, what you call, we have a competing priorities. We have a competing priorities. So in a much that keeping the city clean, green and safe is extremely cardinal or paramount to our well-being. We also cannot negate the fact about having equipment in our real hospitals. We also cannot negate the fact of having a quality education, and you know, quality education as well. So like I said, there's the competing uh, priorities in terms of what we can decide. But, well, the first way we try to be very innovative, we created a means to digitize our revenue collections. When we came here first, over the period of time, our revenue system, well, people were just use a manual system mm -hmm. and uh, what we took interest in we were very amazed about a Liberian company and a Liberian 100% Liberian owner called Ewan it's a it's a payment platform uh, Mr. Kamara is a Liberian a very smart and professional Liberian who has a protracted history of uh, he has a very good sense in terms of technology so he launched this program so I reached out to him and said to him, Mr. Kamara, what is this? And he said, this is a 100% Liberian owned program. So we worked with Mr. Kamara and we launched the program. As we speak to you, Carla, on the year on review, you do not have to come to the city government mm -hmm. to be able to pay. And so because we digitize our payment, it we have afforded all an opportunity to generate a little bit more than what we used to have because it minimizes the space for any potential fraud or people try to compromise. Let me not use corruption, something else. So with that, that's one of the ways we manage, even though it is not every key reach out to our donors uh, to see how they can see the need. Like I said to you, as a mayor on this way, this is our first time. That's why we think this 2022 was, even though it was, it was indeed a challenging one and a very accumulated one for us. But at the same time, we were able to make some, some what you call some pullovers. Yeah. Um, stick 
sticking with uh, sticking with uh, keeping the city clean. Um, I know at some point, maybe it was out a couple of years back or one or two years back, uh, there used to be this mountain of trash all over the place when you were struggling with the landfill issue. You managed to put that behind you, and we don't see that kind of pile of trash no more in the city. But uh, let me ask you this. Uh, if you were just an ordinary citizen who took a walk around your jurisdiction, Monrovia, is Monrovia clean? <laughs> well, and I will, what I will say to you, I want to uh, emphasize a little bit on what you just said about last year. Uh, I'm glad of pointing that you're pointing out that. And that's what we say at the moment. City government, uh, the media, the focus on us, we should be partners in helping our people. Mm -hmm. And uh, when there are challenges, we expect it to flag them. When there are, you know, pluses and uh, work done, you also flag that. Mm -hmm. I know I remember last year, Center Street was a talk of a time. Yeah. But Bowman Bridge was also a talk of a time. Wallace was a talk of a time. Those were places we had a stockpile of waste. So is that no mere far comfort in having a city being greeted with spirit of waste? So we came back, we formed what you call the first thing we formed was the citizen engagement board. We formed we formed a citizen engagement board. We're interested to know. We talked about a cross section of citizens. Ranging from eminent citizens, students, uh, market women, the citizen engagement board, even some government uh, media practitioner, media practitioners as well. Mm -hmm. Madam Bro, who happened to be my predecessor, who served before me, we found we designated her to serve as chair of the citizen engagement board. Unfortunately for us, she came across as a fracas, and which of course you guys know, with the legislature. And that was not the intent. Our intent was being very inclusive, like I said, to you, a collective participation. Mm -hmm. But uh, when that didn't, you know, suffice in the way that we really wanted to be, we came back and we found what you call storm. Storm was a special tax for to release Monrovia of what is engaging to. In our idea of storm, we decided to create a new methodology in engaging our waste collection. That's what you see at the level of uh, Center Street. This time around, what we did, we created a wheel, like a pulley system, where you, the, the truck will be back to Center Street this time around. Now, all you need to do with our cars there, whenever you bring a waste, you place it directly in the truck, and the truck will be there. Sometimes the truck will make five rounds, and I run from there strictly to the truck station. So there's no space again where you will come and be able, so we did that. But even at that, we have some planning constraints, the issue of our trucks, and not many to cover everywhere. Mm -hmm. So what we did, uh, we, we use what you call, we use some hot spots. So few of the hot spots, because you need other trucks to be going around. So we place them there. So when, what we did is that uh, we reduced a lot of the skip buckets within the city. So I think, with that approach, we are thinking again. So it has developed another challenge. You walk around the street, a lot of people just come out because they cannot go to places because we shut down those places. So what people are doing are taking advantage of some of our vulnerable citizens, what they call Zogo. They call them, I mean, citizens. Who wow. Are, so they go and just get them little or nothing, and those kids go and they drop waste all over the street. So we, we have seen that to be very alarming. And Jai was so we see to be very alarming. So you were for me to sit beyond the microphone and tell you that my is clean. No, I can't say that to you. But I can but at the same time, I can't it would be totally unfair to say that efforts are not being applied to get Monrovia to where it's supposed to be. So what is the intention now to work with those people who, uh, or to work around that issue, where people are giving dirt to um, people who are called Zogos to just dump them in the streets? Do you have any intention to make that you know, irrelevant so that people stop that? What is the plan? Thank you. What we have done, we have sent for a storm, 
Stone has been headed by Franco Grimes. Mm -hmm. So we've been having the just yesterday there was a there was a meeting we've been held. We are trying to go to a primary waste collection. Mm -hmm. We are trying to go to a primary waste collection and we want those business uh, businesses that are also within the city, we want them to work along with us. We think we want to inform our vulnerable kids, get them that we formed before we call the CMW, where we use them to plant trees for us before. So we're going to have that meeting. That meeting is, is a long running meeting now, mm -hmm. where plastic bags will be distributed. And those bags will be labeled by the NCC. Those bags will be for sale. We sell those bags, and you don't have to come. And we're also going to allow the CDs. So, in like that, before you just come and know, we're going to send the bag to you. We'll talk to some people that we set up a committee because they have drawer plus. We're going to ask them. So, we're going to count how many houses around the place. They're going to work with us. And the amount of well, wake up bags will be produced by them. And we're going to allow people now, we send a bag to you, and you have it with anybody who will not follow what we're about to do in. 23, that person will be out of the law and such a person will be reprimanded. I'll that follow up with that mm -hmm. there. Um, you have the bag, so the, the citizens are going to buy this bag, put the, the dirt in the bag, and where are they going to dispose of it? So that's where you're going to have the CBE. Okay. You're going to have so CBE. Kind of pick it from the home? The CBE now will be, the CBE will be charged with the responsibility and collect those bags okay. for each and every room. Okay. Well, if you, if you look at any uh, 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 stockpile trash somewhere, one of it is it the bulk of that is plastic we're struggling with uh you know how people dispose of this plastic but majority of people because it's not biodegradable and uh you're creating more plastic um versus getting that out of the of the market how are you going to dispose that yeah for me uh, to be told to you is that you know sometimes it's easy you know? People just think that the city is not clean and just think it's there by expression. There are some fundamental challenges that are surrounding the waste management in every given city. That's why Bira is one of the oldest cities in Africa who do not have a landfill. Wow. Bira do not have a landfill. So what we do in all of our leadership, we are working as seriously to ensure with our partner so that we can have a modern landfill. When you have the one time, that is not a landfill. In fact, in one time, one time has uplifted its usefulness. Even the citizens in Western, they are complaining. They are getting affected by what has been become. If I the choice, the choice that was being made to even create that place, it was being made in the midst of the people. You cannot have waste. That, that is uh, an unused product among, in, among people we have kids, you have other the people. So as I speak to you, we're just working very cautiously and uh, we work with our partner. Hopefully we on a we on a trajectory of computing and erecting our new landfill. As I speak to you now uh, in Chisnumba, I supposed to be talking to the commerce minister who will be very good uh, uh, because the World Bank, some of our contractors, we were talking to the common minister so there is exception we want them to give to uh, uh, those who are controlling the land field so they can have an opportunity to bring their steamer in. I think they say the common minister has a, they have some procedure where you cannot procure steamer out of the place. But when you see by the kind of a land field we want to, and the contractor will guard international people by international standard, they have asked the look, uh, the way they want to construct. So we ask them that so some dispensation can be given to the contractors who, who want the bed from, from the wall and so we can because that is one of the that is one of the things that we just saw. How long is, is it gonna take for that to happen? Well we uh, we already started it. Uh we can say to you uh we are uh, we have uh, we currently negotiating for additional funding because first even the wall bank and our partners uh, they made a projection. I think that projection has been underestimated, mm -hmm. uh, taking into consideration what we want. Because the land field will be where you have, there will be the separation of ways, you have, you will start producing, there will be a lot you can do. Approximately how much would that cost? 
Well, uh, first we were talking, I think technician, I can just tell you off air. First it was around 20 plus million dollars uh, and uh, we're trying to see how we can have additional funding towards that. But I think as we speak to you, we have that already ongoing. Mm -hmm. And uh, we started the process already, the PIU, uh, before we came for this place, we're trying to, hopefully we were even able to launch it. What is the PIU? The, 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 uh, the Project Implementing Unit. Okay. Yeah, the issue about liberalization, because I started listening to you that uh, it's an international company that has won the, the yeah. RE project. What about Liberian own company? Were they being subcontracted to do some of the job? Or is there something out of the box where Liberians will not benefit? The e wali is different from what I'm just saying, but it's. I'm talking PIA, about this project. PIA, uh, mm -hmm. Okay, or, or the, it's not the length of issue. I think, to, to, to the best of my knowledge, I think uh, all of the requirements mm -hmm. that was being uh, projected to our international friends were being fully uh, served. And now, as a mayor, I'm not going to get a wide procurement. No, you're not going to get into it. I think uh, some of the things before we can move on to the next thing, Liberian <laughs> usually complain, like uh, you know, the companies involved in the site that they've not been given such an opportunity to do most of uh, the contracts in the country. So now, listening to you, that it is an international company coming to do such, will there be no other jobs where you know Liberian companies will be subcontracted to do some of these things? Well, uh, Sigma, I don't want to jump the gun. So what I can say to you that what I'm aware of. Mm -hmm. So I will encourage you to do a little bit of investigation towards that. And the facts will be there. Okay. I want to take you okay. back a little bit to this Iwani process because mm -hmm. everything that has to do with waste management, it, it costs a lot of money. And I hear you talk about this process where um, citizens will have to pay money. I want you to go back a little bit. How do those who are in Monrovia, how do they contribute to this process? How do they pay uh, for the city to get money or your office to get money to run the city? Did the, uh, I already, already, you know, already relied and already appreciate the media intervention. Like that. And like I keep saying to people is that uh, our challenge is that is our sake. People mentality about ways is quite different. And interestingly, these are people when they travel, they see exactly what happens. You're right. There's nothing more costly in this in the handling of the city more than waste management. Every day people produce waste. Yeah. Every minute in a second. Mm -hmm. As we leave from here, there will be something. And I went to a community the last time and uh, we even created one of the PRU on the plus project. We created what you call a competition among the communities. I think about Selby School. Now. We said the cleanest community will be able to win any project of your choice and will come to you. Fortunately for all the 150 communities, we got about three communities who just about trying to take ownership. Jacqueton, but fortunately, the they begin the uh, they won. And we asked them what do you want? Jacqueton said they wanted to help them. I just dedicated a hand on, on December 17th yeah? and I uh, also dedicated a, a cheers for them. It was a way of just stimulating and lining people up. Take for example, I went to come out and I said, look, all of you people here, what are you now a house owner? You are a renter. You do not expect a, the landlord to be responsible for where you lie or even your yard. Is it this self, this self awareness? All of us need to be aware of our environment. If every citizen or every community is aware of trying to make their environment clean, safe, and clean, I can pretty say to you, Morovia will be safe. And that, it, it, it cannot just be the mayor. I think each and every one of you, you just need the mayor, is, you are all mayor in your own respective yeah. in a position. So today, we're working in uh, enhancing the awareness and ensuring that people need to pay for waste management in the city. And that we, we will begin with the drama. We try to work with, uh, with, with uh, what you call Judy and the Cultural Ambassador 
we try to work with what people speak in the local vernaculars and with your drama so that we can move around and see how we can have a broader you know awareness and perspective how people can begin to pay for waste in the country and, and i think we stick with the final <clears throat> on 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 waste the way the way we dispose of trash or waste in our country is totally different and you just let the cat out of the bag you made a very very strong or let's say disturbing revelation here that we do not have no landfill when you said that it hit my gut that means uh people even living in the areas are going through a lot are there city ordinances on the book to punish people if they litter of, of course uh if they are if they, we have we have those laws and to be told some of those laws we are uh, only this year on review there are some of the things i want to uh, bring up to the to the public some of those laws are absolute they are absolute laws where we can where we can uh, we need for this to be reassigned mm -hmm. so we found some of the best lawyers we hire some the lawyers so we can be able to can you really, cite one of them? Yeah, we can, yeah, no, basically, honestly, one session seven mm -hmm. that says to you that look, you should not lift up the street. When you drop, when you turn a plastic upon the bed, mm -hmm. it's a tough one. You know, even take a sample in a pool, even in a chiba, when you pick it up, you should use, when those days, when city police come around, when they see the trash can, you should be, you should be arrested for that. So, as another one, I don't want to say public here, you know, very comical, uh, but again, that is the country we have. Uh, our, our forefathers have their own reason for such a law and all stuff. But I can assure you, we're working as seriously. We are people. Most of my leadership style is quite different. I like to have a, you know, what you call a participatory engagement. Okay. Getting people involved <coughs> and so that they can take ownership of whatsoever uh, situation that is currently confronting them. Okay, I think uh, we've uh, asked and moved on you know, most of the issues about the city. We will move uh, on you a something. little bit with the city. Um, if you were to grade yourself <laughs> the year under review, what would be the grade for uh, the job you <laughs> in the city? What can you create me? You need a green one. You think I'll be biased or green one? It's up to you if you're biased. Is there something you would say 50 50 or 60 40? Over my, my work I have done? In the city. In the city? Mm -hmm. I think I'll feel much comfortable when you take your marble from the people uh, rather than to see. Right, right. I think uh, we'll, yeah. So, you your prospects you for 2023 mm -hmm. as we go to, you know, because 2023 is a very critical year. It's an election year, and um, it's the last year uh, your government has to run this uh, country until we go to elections. What are your prospects? But you just tell me, oh, in the view, I don't have any change. Give me a whole overview about what I've been doing. But you just tell me, just question me. When we do that, you put that in there, and then you just tell us your prospects. Now let's move to another. Can we say this? Yeah, what the what the present ambition? <laughs> yeah, I like this. It's not yeah, yeah, I like yeah, the yeah, choice of Certainly, yeah, yeah, but you're doing well. You're doing well there. Yeah, yeah, yeah go ahead. So, anyway. Well, mm -hmm. I want to say thank you again for this type of form of engagement, and I think we owe it to our people. Uh, overall, when I was walking, coming in, I was sick with saying. You know, that each and every one of us, uh, we are seven of our people. And that the only means we can do is that to owe them explanation mm -hmm. about what we're doing and what we're facing. And I think is even though sometimes we're not comfortable with the way people like, you know, Sharif, you know, Sigma, <laughs> you know, approach. We don't hear any but, interview, I hope we will. But, <laughs> but I think it's also a favor for us. Right. Because when you do not fill in the gap with the right for information, that gap could be filled from, with mis and disinformation. And sometimes people say, but Mayor, why are you always having press conferences? I said, of course, because 
I owe a responsibility to communicate what I do to the people. If I do not do that, meaning I give a space to a person who parades with or uh, missed the disinformation. So I think it's important is to, to let the public know. And I said today on our on our year-end review, we have come to appreciate, we have come to challenge our constituents. We want them to, to come along with us. And the way to do it, I normally say to them like, think about Rwanda. People often say the city of Rwanda is clean. But you don't hear the mayor name. The people speak about the community. The people speak about the city. And it is, it is the mentality of the residents within the city. And like you, a lot of people don't know what we face with I said to you. You check all around. How do you have, how do you want to have a city? And nobody cares to say where you take the waste. Right. Nobody cares to where you take the waste. There will be a place where you take the waste to and how you take it and what what has been done. You have the medical waste, you have several stuff of waste. What do you do? Everybody just thing when the street is fitted or they say that is the waste management situation about that. That's far beyond that. In our traffic station, see what things we are. We are now trying to work to ensure that Pinsville, even though we are constructing the newly constructed landfill, we are also trying to see that so Pinsville can have a temporary left diagonal traffic station. Because you have to have a traffic station first before you even move to the landfill. To the landfill. Because what you have to do is that you clean up and you take it to the traffic station. The traffic station, because the traffic station is the immediate point of contact. Yeah. Then from there, you take it to the landfill. It is in the landfill where the various separation will take place and what you need to do. All of those things, our country and our city in particular, is seriously lacking. So we want to say that as we move, we hopefully now, in 2023, we hope before we, we end 2023, we will have a newly constructed landfill by our partners, and I will something we're very glad about. We are concentrating to launch it in uh, the opening of the construction. Like I just, while I was talking to, uh, I tried to reach out to my colleague, uh, the Commerce Minister, for a year, uh, we'll be on a place of call to us, so we can be on fast track our engagement so that Hopefully February we can start a very tangible place and we can be able to take the press there and you begin to see some of the progress being made so far. But at this point I want to uh, mention um, about the Global Parliament of Mayor mm -hmm. and about our engagement in uh, in the United States of America. Mm -hmm. Like you were fortunate mm -hmm. you know, to be selected along with a part of hosting uh, the Global Parliament of Mayor. Oslo and uh, three other countries that we were selected, the city of Mobile was selected to, to sit on the panel and formulate, you know, we talk about extremism, violence, it's good for us. We, 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 came, we, we came for more 14 years, and we also, uh, we also going for elections. So to see like you, particularly Southern Zambia, asking me or asking me to serve uh, on our community. I think it's something laudable, it's something huge for our city. So because we come to the table with our experiences, we can be able to share our perspective to be able to talk the global world. So we also want to mention about what we are anticipating for the global parliament of the We want to use this time to talk to our business community. We will be announcement in January, the VR committees that we want to help us work to ensure that September, the conference will start arranging uh, in September, around uh, 16, 17, 18, basically around uh, four, five days conference. Uh, when it's a conference, uh, we we'll have a lot, uh, we'll have focus on the last community here. Uh, fortunately for all, at that time, we are also 
uh, be geared on to our uh, election process. So those are things we want to say to the public. We expect the city and our citizens to be very much cooperative. And we also want to talk to our friends back on one side. We have sent people to talk to them. We have permitted them to sell for the Christmas. And uh, you can remember when COVID 19 started, we built tables for them. And I will uh, even when we constructed a, a modern facility with two uh, chains for them, both male and uh, female. We want to say to them that we effectively in January there will be a regulation. We will be able to regulate their movement and sound. We encourage them, those who have an opportunity to have the things within which you take advantage of that. We will not tolerate the game. We not only tolerate when you have, we see a lot of this, when you see the continuum okay, uh, uh, to be using in the day. We don't say effectively general around the house. Continue will only be coming to one side in the night. We do not want the continue to be coming. And there will be a demarcation where cars should park. We do not want the cars, they park in the dealing with the the uh, what you call the trustful unions. We're also talking to the, uh, the trustful ministry. So we ask them that the way there should be some orderliness in in one side and we talk with the business people. If you have a continuum, there will be a specific time we start from the continuum. We want continuum to start here. We have a continuum or Let's we provide security for you, but we think continue should start hitting water side at 8 p.m. 8 p.m. for the rest of the time, we can decide we have that time. But to say, to have continue driving into... So what are you going to do about security then? Because if I have my container coming around 8 p.m. Uh, to water side and I have to upload that container, security has to be there. You have the criminals around, all these things. Yeah, those, those are those are things we're working on. The Liberian National Police and the Marujo City Government Police will work here so there will be a job. And so the office of uh, one or two, uh, Mahan Sako, he's been asked to release with the Marujo City Government so we can uh, derive uh, a comprehensive operational draft so that our citizens can be protected. Stay, okay, stay let me with just come in. Okay. Uh, I think uh, mm -hmm. you've said a lot about your international engagement or some of the things you've done. This issue about what just transpired in your city that has to do with uh, some quote unquote less privileged Liberians where they said they were to receive money from uh, the chief of protocol but with any time they did not see and they took things into their hands. Two persons were killed. What I feel to say it seems to be lawlessness is taking over Monrovia. No, uh, I shall disagree with your politician and all this thing about the world. And I think is, uh, what transpired is unfortunate. And as I said before, I begin my speech. I quickly recognize the demands of those uh, citizens of our country. Uh, what I think is, it was being misinformation and disinformation. People take advantage. And that's why I often say to people, Either you tell your own story or somebody tell it for you. These people took advantage of those vulnerable kids and gave them a disinformation. I remember one of the time when I contacted the chief of approval of the president's office, she has no communication, she has spoken to no one. And sometime last year, it was, a, it was a good will and she started to do a good will gesture. I think it was a game, you know, uh, for the backdrop of that good way gesture, mm -hmm. somebody misconstrued that and they, they thought that once you got on that in a plane that would be a, a likely move for kids, and those those people people succeeded in doing that. And I said to them, 
that is not appropriate because some of those things that's been done is hinges on the repetition of the country. We need to stop when we turn. There must be some demarcation and there must be some point where you say, look, this type of politics, this, I'm a Liberian first before becoming a politician. What can I do to help this country? So just because somebody thought they want to embarrass this government, at the end result, we have to lose this life. Somebody celebrated that. You, in a country where people celebrate people make an accident, you in a country, it's, I think it's struggling. I don't think it's appropriate. Uh, we don't want to use that one instance to counterbalance the city of the Lawrence. This city is not Lawrence, and uh, I think we try our effort, we do everything positively to make sure that we're keeping what is cool and kind. I listen to you, you did not say much about the less privileged people in your city. And some of what you listen to them say that uh, the president made a promise to them when he was elected that could be a home where to have them to leave what they are involved with. And nothing seemed to happen, and you said nothing about it. What the government has done or thinking about doing to have the young people unfortunately seeing themselves into the conditions they find themselves in? I think uh, the president and all the program uh, through the instrumentality of uh, the mutual agreement so even me as a person here, I uh, of them, the first time I created those trees you see, coconut trees on the street, what mm -hmm. about them? I created what you call the CNO the city maintenance workers. And those are people we set up to work with, and uh, we would talk to who have some level of uh, assistance to sustain the continuation of that. It didn't work out, but we're grateful. Uh, and I'm working with them, we're able, to, we're able to transform 28 of them. 28 of them, uh, some of them work with the Memorial City Police, uh, some of them work with our waste management uh, place, some of them work with our advertisement. So 28 of them were able to be transformed and we have normally we not showcase the way other people in their grandstand. We ask them to be testimony of their own story. They go around and tell people and people will see them. When they come across them, they talk to them and they will be able to see them. We have an encounter with the mayor, 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 we have an encounter of people. Let us start personalizing and you know, dividing this president. I think the president was elected on library people. His actions should not be quantified in, in a particular or a specific direction. He just on Christmas Day, this is a man who went on the street playing soccer on those kids. Um can what are I don't see nobody in this world, any president, who was able, was able to get on the street. Because the first president in the country it should be the president of the city. If this man can go on the street and play soccer with uh, vulnerable kids, so he can tell you about the safety of the city, he can tell you about his, his connectivity with the people. It's not just about, but I don't think this country has a lot to go through. It's not just about. Every other thing. If that's the case, then we just dig everything out as we imagine. But everything is going to be, you know, we take our time historically and gradually. Yeah, with the at breaks youth, uh, uh, you think uh, uh, handouts for these guys, is there a plan to, to once and for all deal with them? I know this question should not be directed to you but because they reside in your city and we see the numbers are ballooning exponentially. That's why I'm posing this question to you, but, uh, or else I should be asking the Minister of Youth and Sports. Uh, is there something you're out of collaborating to once and for all, or just you know, put a lid to this particular problem and solve it once and for all? Because, you know, innocent people are struggling out there and then they find these guys come in and, you know, I don't want to use the Z word, and they're snatching purses, 
when season come, you saw what happened in the city. People were running for their lives and all of that. People got hurt. Some people lost items and all of that. What is government actually doing or what, what are you doing to make sure that this thing is, uh, what are you suggesting to your colleagues that are involved to get this thing once and for all? Yeah, I could firstly make a uh, couple of suggestions here. And I think firstly, the government needs to work together in a concerted way to address this issue. And I think what we're doing, I think we, if care is not mind, we, we easily drop the door. Mm -hmm. I think we need to work together as a government. I think both agency and ministry. So we have a similar approach to, to tackle it. Because it's a great concern. And I would say this is not a politics, this is a reality. It's a serious real concern. I think let us, one thing we notice is that we should uh, let go the, you know, the territorial mentality and say, look, uh, because I am responsible for this sector, then it is squarely my responsibility. But I think we need to let go the territorial mentality and we begin to put everybody on the team to work together and we find a concerted effort in find a solution. And what we need to do, and I think we, uh, when you look at the laws about the guys who import, and uh, when you look at it, and I think there should be another way there. Uh, people say it's not available. If you ask me, I would think we need those of the people who are the cut in this crime, why don't we attach fees to it? Take for example, when you can't say, keep you in jail and nothing's been done. If you are caught, we ask you to say, well, this property, you can be taxed 200,000, you can be taxed 50,000, you can be taxed 25,000, you know, I said that. But just so, I may not be, you got to maybe throw it out, feed you, you know, it may not be the way structured. I'm just telling, when that is done, it serves two purposes. One is this person will be, you know, afraid. You can't. You don't have the money to pay. Secondly, when you pay the money, that money will be used to create rehabilitate. You know, to to have the guys rehabilitated. We carry them. These these are places we different. So you don't necessarily have to be taking government money. Even the same sector can be able to produce some money, rather than just to say, "Look, you want to get a man non payable and and you." you if the man, you catch a man with drugs and the man come back in the community. So basically, the guys, those kids, they are the end users. So the first of all, we need to deal with the source. Then they're focusing on the end users. All right. We need to focus on the source and how can we deal with the source. And the first way is the laws. And how can we, you know, you know fine tune the law in the way that those who are constantly engaged in abusing the system can be a fair and when they have been done. Once the people who bring in the drugs cannot no longer bring the drugs, the guys on the street will not find because for them to be affected, they have to find the drugs. Right. When the drugs is not available, you're not going to see it anymore. And before we start thinking about how to deal with those people, I, mean, I think that's the approach. Okay, Mayor, let, let's move on to politics. We uh, uh, before, uh, before, before you, before you, you move on, yeah, I just want to get, let me put the, the, the icing on the cake on this one. Uh, what will Morovia look like uh, three days to the conference of mayors in your city? Well, we, we, we are working as seriously to ensure that Morovia will be clean, green, and safe. In our way, we, we try to engage with branding. Uh, we try to even pick up even the even the cities is uh, kind of congested. So we even try to see about we try to work with uh, Colombo soon in terms of uh, to decongest traffic and the way we want to do those things. We don't want our people to come here and uh, they carry uh, a different optic. So we we'll keep in touch with you. Uh, Problem, we would like people like you to be keep in touch with you very sure. closely sure. and to see how we can get on Because they are also asking some of them, uh, and that's why we need to be mindful. Some of them, you being trusted. They also told me about the two kids that got killed. I got a call from, from New York, uh, the guys in the mayor office. 
and you as well, you're going to also learn concern. And I got a call from also Japan. So people follow since the government is coming, people are researching Mongolia. Wow. People are trying to see and things that happen. So I think we are a kind of a huge responsibility. And that's why we we come to say look. We go into politics, people will try to they will take politics over people and they will take politics over country and they will not care to who are in the land uh, to to defend the image of this country. And we are here also to be able to give a different picture, to get the actual picture of what the realities are. Okay, like like I said, uh, we move into politics. Uh, uh, for those of the people listening, we have been uh, joining to be with uh, the mayor of the city of Monrovia. Mayor, on behalf of uh, my colleagues, I want to say congratulations on your election as uh, Secretary General of uh, the Congress for Democratic Change. Coalition. Right? No, it's not a coalition, though. Mm -hmm. It's the Congress, Congress for Democratic Change. The coalition is uh, something around three political parties. There's no longer coalition. Okay, um, Secretary General, now we refer to you now as the Secretary General. Let me correct that. The coalition is still. It has inspired. It has inspired. It has inspired. The coalition has inspired. Do you want to make that clear, Mayor, so that people listen to you? Simple. Obviously, we have an arrangement. The aspiration of the in no way indicate that we're not in our conversation. We have met. Uh, the three political parties are working together cohesively. As we speak to you, before we even, before we even reach here, there was, there was a communication that the both leaders, the three leaders, have fixed their communication of their signatures before the departure of the president to his. Uh, Two was around the war. So for you to say there's no coalition is indicate that we have separated and we're going separately. What I want to project to you know, you're right. Aspiration day is that, but we have modified it as I speak to you. Every other thing stay of course and we still work together as a coalition. I was elected as secretary of the Congress of Democratic Church. Each of the three political parties who have their separate you know, separate congresses. But it doesn't mean we negate the fact that we do not work together. So to let mm -hmm. we are represented as the coalition of democratic change. Secretary General, we'll reach to that issue, but um, we need to still get some clarity about that because the documents in our possession shows that there, there there's no coalition. But let me let me say, like I said, congratulations. First of all, in the political area, uh, of recent, we listened to uh, the announcement from you and that of uh, the chairman of CDC, in which you people postponed the organized uh, you know, program to re-elect or maybe ask the president to contest come 2023 on the ticket. This is what political pundits, they've been saying that um, CDC is losing grip in terms of all the support of the Liberian people. So looking at all of the indications, indicators, they won't have the number of persons they want to have in terms of uh, asking the president to recontest. So that's one of the reasons why they push uh, the time to next year, so to give them ample time to do engagements begging the Liberian people. Why you people decided to postpone the the announced date of uh, you people asking the president to recontest? Well, thank you, uh, Singh. Uh, the nomination, as a matter of fact, we be nominating the president, and the president all the one will nominate his his last nominee. <laughs> and I want again to re-emphasize with clarity that the coalition for democratic change is in good spirit. The coalition for democratic change are held together and continue to go together. There will be some challenges which are not unique to only us. But we can assure the Nigerian people 
Én a volt év vállalat, hogy a kódosan 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 a a kódosan 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 a a to lead a library, people here must be a conglomeration of us settling about people so that we can be able to conserve the leadership of power that's been here. Grand coalition, what does that mean? Grand coalition means we, we're going to have more than three political parties. That's uh, your anticipation. Yeah, that's when we are working towards that. Is it what you generally do? You can allow to do that. Let the cat out of the bear. I'm not really into trouble. No. <laughs> but you want to go to the trouble. But we want to see it because it's sick who trying to. But that was the point. And, uh, there is uh, there, there's concern that uh, the people are going to get into the trouble. There is concern that what if we have to postpone the, the nomination program mm. and the thing that we are. Unpopular or getting unpopular. Well, it does not for me to say that will be left with the library people to judge. We are not competing popularity here. For us, we don't that. Popularity for us is something that we did, we, we did way back. And nobody can undo the popularity that this populous people movement as an initiator in this country. Only the CDC can undo itself. With time of our knowledge, serve the foundation of this country. So for us, we are more in tune with impact and all. Are we impacting or are we not? Those are things we are listening to. But because we have the biggest thing to provide leadership for the people in this country, if anyone is attempting to say, like I'm the mayor in this place, and a kid outside there trying to track me, I'm not going to gamble the leadership of the Moravia City government to a kid that is outside there who, when I get by him, they will ask the questions, but you have so much to, you have so much at stake. Why didn't you, you know, Think bigger right. than what you imagine. So we, do, we are not moved by the emotion. I sent you say to go to the election commission. We wrote the election commission informing them that our activities were commencing from the 17th to the 20th. We look a political arrangement came and said they were going to stage a protest on the 17th. So for us, it was an auto provocation. We thought it was geared towards to, to provoke this peaceful nature of the Congress and the coalition for democratic change. So immediately on the distinguishing of His Excellency Dr. George Manawia, he said, I'm a peaceful guy, I'm a paragon of peace. I have never compromise those principles. So even though some of us at the National Executive Committee did not believe in what he was saying, but he, he, he used his lobbyistic skills and he persuaded us in the National Executive Committee meeting, which of course he's participated in, and his vision was, look, there is no need for us to come in conflict with potential troublemakers, people who are opting for trouble. So it's not going to cost you anything. Why don't you extend your program to a debt we can't in conflict with? No. In fact, that gave our people an opportunity to celebrate their festive season to the country. Because he brought forth a more logical argument, and the end result, we were able to win. So what is important, Seiko, and I expect you to be asking, which of course you didn't ask, you should be commending the fact that we saved this country from running into chaos. 
And I want to reach this now to tell the thank you. I want to tell, say thank you to Zaza Kawa. Zaza Kawa was able to write a letter commending the chairperson saying, look, we were very concerned when people said they were bringing hundreds of thousands of citizens outside, and not that one. It's going to, they were going to bring, citizens are going to be angry. They were not bringing church board outside. They were not bringing, they say, they are going to bring the citizens that they are going to succeed and you know, successfully hit 1,000 into anger and bring them. You could not protect, you could not predict the outcome of that thing. Right. So you could not predict. So since we are bringing those kind of people, hundreds of thousands of those people, the excellence of Dr. George Mano, we are sell off. Let us avoid these people and let give them all to themselves. And I want to seize this time to say thank you to Compatra Sue, who continue to display it. You know, high level of professionalism would think the law. In this place, protesting on the ambassador we are is becoming a, you know, a culture of this government where food and everything will be given. And we want to start to, what you call, uh, I want a soup for the minister, man. You need to put a certain budget within the state with the, uh, what you call the Moravian, or uh, uh, what you call the Library of National Police. Where they can be, we need something that you need to put on the budget. We go go to elections. Right. You need to put at least about two hours. There will be more protests, and so as a result, there will be more food. Yes, so Patrick will be giving them food. That's what Patrick should do. Okay, let me get this big answer please before you come in. Uh, Secretary General, and the reason why I'm continuing to call you the Secretary General because we're discussing politics. We're no longer on the MCC issue. Secretary General uh, Koji, the just ended convention mm -hmm. has been marked by controversy. And uh, surprisingly, well, I mean, I when he's. Able, they, no, they listen, push. Secretary uh, General Koji, listen to us, please. When these kinds of activities are about to take place, you have announcements, you have uh, jingles informing those of the people that are wanting to participate. But unless what just happened, we did not see such. On the same day the convention was to be taking place, it is the same day we saw just on newspaper, and some of your partisans are complaining that this process was not done properly. Why you leaders decided to do such? For me, to let the last thing you take away the beat of this press conference. <laughs> this press conference is intended to speak. Oh, you now want to tell people who's people to ask or who not to ask. I can't tell <laughs> people about some of the progresses mm. and the challenges that I have encountered and I have made. Mm. I saw my sister city relationship mm. with Sir Barry. I saw a sister city relationship with Wayne Brown Taxi, uh, East Coast Taxi. Those are things we saw, those and things happen. This man is bringing, you know, professional. You are the fish in the child of this. <laughs> I'm not sure you want to tell us what to do. Just answer the last one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you want to answer the question about the controversy surrounding the just in the convention. All usual things happened. Why? So, thank you. I don't want you to run. Uh, the people of Monrovia are in the office. This office, the uh, mayor of the city of Monrovia, mm -hmm. has should be talking squarely about some of the things that are affecting the people communities. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. right. Mm -hmm. So let us see to you. The issue sitting on the council of the the but speak to the case that time. <laughs> <laughs> the ERBC said wants to say we we conducted the process. You know the issue of uh, sitting in the last of here. They want to be the newsmaker and they're not the newsmaker. So they, you should be telling me, making reference to a particular stakeholder of our people who got issue with our process. Our process was conducted, and you should be able to be commanding us that our media practitioners, they were. A lot of cross section of people. Mm -hmm. The law says you should issue your process to go to convention. Uh, uh, con con convention. Mm -hmm. Was it published? Yes. We put you and people to go wrong behind and bring people and say we follow all of 
the requisite procedures in ensuring that a responsible political party conduct its business. Those processes were being squarely followed. If there is any issue that is contract you know, that is counterproductive, we encourage the person of interest to go to LEC. We encourage you to go to the Supreme Court. But anything falls short of that is a person who trying to have carry on no issue. So the process were conducted free, fair. We have proven again to the Liberian people that we have an unquestionable relationship with our political institution. I'm not seeing all the roses in our party. We have our own ups and downs. But to say to conduct the affairs of our activities, which are those people who are criticizing us, they should be telling us this is an open challenge. Let the people, these political arrangements, let it go. They do not even, they do not even select a candidate to represent them. What they did, they talked about what we do what they do, and they get issue with that. Our process for me and Titi was democratically conducted. The media was there, and it suited all democratic precepts that is required to conduct that process. Yeah, so, let me, let me I, I listen to you calling my colleagues' names. You don't want to call my name. But yeah, let me yeah, just, no, I want to end this. I know we Hold on, let me go to the uh, uh, Thank you. Uh, we don't want to make this uh, mm -hmm. uh, a dialogue. And go ahead, let's take with the December, the December 17th to the 20th. Yeah. And uh, I know I heard that uh, as well for the confrontational uh, aspect of it. You managed to postpone that uh, uh, because the CPP uh, accused your party you know, uh, you know, of corruption, and they accuse your party of corruption, and they they, they try to launch this uh, protest on the same day that you were, you know, about to go do your nomination, and to avoid confrontation, you backed off because you're ruling party. Now, I need your honest opinion on this. Here is a here is a group or leading political figure that is accusing you of corruption. During the 17th morning when they were launching their, pro, their rally, uh, we're tired of suffering rally, uh, there was this missing $70,000. Though we cannot independently verify the number, but some money got missing. And up to now, there are some folks who are saying uh, that this money, the, the, the leader uh, who is in the person of Alexander Cummings should have punished you know, the likes of Louis Brown and all of those who were the cause of this uh, 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 money getting missing. Is it a case where the kettle is saying the pot is blocked? I need your comment on that. What do you make of that? Well, thank you. Thank you, so kind. One thing is that I respect the library who said the judge. I think that the library judge, those are the people who are asking to be employed by them. So, uh, if the man who a job and the way he trying to conduct himself, when you pick chicken soup, then he have party for you, and he's scared of the opponent. You are going to go and watch it and see. All we want to say is grateful for the opportunity they gave us. They gave us six years, and uh, Ambassador Ria is leading, and we will, we will be very glad that we get back to them. And we judge on the basis of what we have done with, with the leadership we have given us. Okay, let me ask this question. I hope uh, we have those interviews and let my colleagues protect me as well. Uh, SG, there has been this issue uh, about, sorry if uh, this hurts you, but I need to ask as journalists, uh, about you making a lot of mistakes whenever you are addressing either the media or you having speeches. It's a problem from your early childhood education foundation or it's something that you don't see it in any way where people will say you don't pronounce well, you made a lot of mistakes. Well, Sibu, is he learning how to learn? Those are questions you don't ask, Sibu. I appreciate that, Sibu. Of course, Sibu, I'm, I'm in a definition of the of the tragedy of this country. I'm often the definition of that. 
to see people praying in the world and say, what is it We continue to be grateful and never ashamed of what we are. We have never come publicly. I was born in the went to West Point, challenging education, of course, we have it. And that's the reason why we got inspired to join this revolution, to give, to spare those kids for our own children, mm -hmm. so they can never be a victim of child's inclusion. We're a victim of this education, a victim of marginalization, a victim of so many things. But when these things happen, do you feel bullied? Because uh, 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 I know I, I'm, 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 I'm being honest here because I've talked to some other colleague and they see it as that because Liberia has always struggled with this class system. Uh, is it that because uh, Koji sits behind here today, that's why you've been bullied? Well, basically, it's about the good thing that I see here. Uh, I admire my critics so dearly. Uh, years back, it was about my early, it was me obtaining my BSc degree. They criticized me, forced me for me, and when I feel inspired by what I see. I am on a learning process. I am not infallible to anything. To say, Koji, I work consistently, repeatedly, in case the microphone we with a clear sense of adversity, with courage, we're in West Point. Our conditions were, were never ashamed of our conditions. So we stand very firm, and there's no justification of some of the errors we know. There's some of the errors we make, of course. My dad, my, I'm a human being. I mean, but well, if you want to use one of those instances to to define me and to think that Koji is going to make you happy, I see my brother, you are entitled to that. And I know this for who you are. So, those are the people who are so sophisticated and so educated, we appreciate them. But we also do not, in any given point in time, I disturb. If that's the issue, uh, is it you bullying me? I will not be having press conference here. It's not the first time. I've been putting on numerous occasions and I will continue. There is that as long as in the business, there will be another time. There are a couple of things they have said, like Koji has said it. And Koji said, of course, after the English is not something that I mastered in terms of communicating, but I master what my thoughts are. I master what my decision may be. Mm. It's, it's something about how I come. Well, nobody is infallible in terms of communication. So yes, they have a point, yeah. and they will always, will always have them. Who think that you can take a flight on me? Well, some of those things, you know, you know I get, I, I get across. I appreciate our life. Mm -hmm. I'm not disturbed by that. Trust me, I'm in fact inspired, and I think those of my critics. And sometimes I wonder, I say, like the year is coming to an end. The year is coming to an end. I haven't bought anything yet. And luckily for me, a year came up. Wow. Those things are something that, uh, in fact, you connect me with my kids, you connect me with my people. And so people go around, so it is it, it is what it is. And uh, we're trying to work, and we, we never have that person, we are student. We, when those things happen, we work on ourselves, we're developing ourselves, we're not master of it. We try to work to become a better communicator, we do everything. But if you can think that because of those things we make, and you can capitalize, I like the fact that you know you said this that you kind of you know learn from your mistakes and you cannot be bullied you're not defined by that I believe that young people who find themselves in similar you know um, situations can use you as a role model because nobody is infallible as you've said I like to bring you back a little bit to uh, this grand coalition we're talking politics, we're going to elections. You've been elected as Secretary General of the CDC. 
that's the, the um, a cover for the local church. You were the uh, youth league chair, now being elected as secretary general of the party. What difference, you know, are you going to make in this position as we go to elections? Wow. <laughs> That's a huge thing. And I'll be quite honest with you. It's a huge difference. And I'm always prepared for my responsibility. When I have been president, <coughs> none of the company to serve a mayor. Ask for self, why would they ask where it takes? to occupy that space. But one thing I bless God for, I believe in myself. Irrespective you know, of what the condition that may be confronting me, uh, I pray to God and I ask him for wisdom and guidance. You're right, I missed being the leader of the young people. It's a huge constituency. And, uh, but I learned a lot. It taught me how to manage uh, complexity, difficult issues, because you deal with cross sections of people with different behavior, uh, with different emotions. So, but also, it was also helpful for me in a way that I could rely on them, I could talk to them, they could relate with me. Those are moments I will forever cherish, even in my grades. But as a secretary general, they have given me a more broader perspective that I now have to deal with a particular constituency. I deal with the entirety of our political spectrum. So I have to deal with the young people, I have to deal with the women's league, I have to deal with the central leadership, so I have to deal with, you know, with the National Executive Committee, so everybody. So, it's a huge responsibility, and I can assure you, when I became youth leader, it was a tax to take us from opposition to the ruling establishment as a young man. Now I'm a sector I have a responsibility by the grace of the Almighty God to ensure that we protect and sustain the gains that have been made under this leadership. And the way to do that, the sector general is like the trinity of the movement. He's like the trinity of the movement, and that he has to play like a midfielder to ensure that everything is perfectly being coordinated. Can you do that? Well, I can tell you that I will try my best. <clears throat> I will try my best to make a difference. Okay, that's, that's SGF, yeah, um, even though this is not something that uh, you should be blamed off, but it also it comes to a point where you're going to be facing some of the challenges that has to do with uh, the three political institutions. One is the LPDP, the NPP, and that of the CDC. There have been a lot of complaints from uh, the two, you know, collaborating political parties. Some of what they've said, that uh, the distribution of uh, jobs has not cut across. They've been left out. Based on the agreement, jobs were to be distributed equally. They are not. And the EC meeting, you people should have had easy meetings, discussions being made, decisions are agreed per what the agreement required concerning political leaders. But all these things are not working, even though there were signatures affixed to said process. So they no longer trust the upcoming arrangements which you may mention of as to affect their signatures. What are you gonna do as the Secretary General from the political institution that has brought on board the presidency to convince the other people with commitments that this time around when signatures are being affixed what you experienced will not be experienced this time around all right i want to say thank you uh a key point i left out i just want to run more through that quickly the first one i want to run more through is that we have a very important 
initiative here and uh, that uh, got to do with we launched what you call the Georgia Nationalism, a war of nationalism. And I was this young lady, and I want to seize this opportunity, this young lady who struggled, graduated uh, uh, Kimberly, and graduated from uh, what you call UMU. She was faced with a challenge. She dropped out. She has to have a key, and after she had a key, she didn't allow her, you know, her situation to disrupt her, 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 what you call her focus. She went to me and she graduated with uh, Magna Cum Laude. She graduated with Magna Cum Laude and she went to uh, Cyprus. She also graduated with distinction and she came back. Yet yeah, it's the tricky one later. A lot of the kids, when they come back to the country, they want to ask a government job. They want to work a VP. But this young lady decided to go in the classroom and she started to teach as uh, a very historical school, uh, what you call Lockery. Lockery. She was in Lockery serving as a teacher. So for us, that sense of nationalism was something very remarkable that we wanted to flag. So we quickly on the city, we talked to the president. So we, we launched what you call the award of you know, nationalism, the Georgia Award of Nationalism, mm -hmm. where you have to take, you know, take service over opportunity. And so we, want, and we also want to see the time to say thank you to uh, the deputy head of mission of the, of the U.S. Embassy, uh, Joel Mambar. He met us in the community. He joined us, and we have community engagement. We also want to use this time to uh, call on our international partners to help work with us as we work with a lot of our young students, Youth for Change. It was a debate team, we engaged them. Those are things we engaged them. I mentioned something to you about Moriba being selected. And what I really want to talk about is at Oslo, Tunis, and at the heat for the, for the Global Parliament Group of Strong City Network. Strong city network. So Moravia is selected to discuss that. That sometimes a very huge benefit about that. And the, the issue here about we all being here, we want to say thank you again. And so you want to answer the question I asked which one? concerning the the coalition? The coalition thing. Oh yes, I said that to you. Uh, we working towards every other thing. And a very soon. No, it's simple. That boy very small. In our coalition, I'm working. The next day, we all will have from PG, all the We all know what we do. So I can't do this thing all day, leave all out of it. Yeah. Mr. <laughs> thank you so much for okay. an, uh, uh, an okay. opportunity yeah. to ahead. speak with you um, concerning the city of Monrovia and your plan for uh, the coming year. And also, congratulations again as Secretary General of the Coalition for Democratic Change. My final question that I'll still, you know, lingering on is this grand coalition you're talking about. How many parties will be a part of this grand coalition? Okay, the Sego said something the last night, and somebody was very tricky about that, and I want to help him. Sego asked us, who is our greatest competitor? And before he asked it, I may ask it for him. <laughs> and the reason I'm trying to treat it as such, because Madam Drew is making a point. We want to have a grand coalition. We are engaging service all the political parties. Beyond what we have currently. We wishing to have as many parties that will be willing to hear us out, that will be willing to see the need. What is the intent? A, what I intend is very simple. We, we, we want to say to you is that <coughs> this country, we must develop this country with all hands on this. We do not want to mark. Mark is arrogance when you say the we are a party. We are not in like that. Everybody has their own uniqueness. And I think uh, we want to see this time. We were yesterday. We went out to uh, Dr. Cassell and uh, we paid him a homage. Uh, we were very saddened by his demands and we thought it was very 
very fortunate. And even for me, I also feel very much hurt. And matter of fact, he also is a fear. Uh, I'm a party chairperson, led a array of partisans who were able to go there and sympathize with his for his fortunate. Since his party is one of those parties that you are bringing on to the coalition? We, we are concentrating on ANC. We want to bring them to the coalition. ANC? Yes. 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 Why? Yeah, we, because we think the way to, uh, to change this country is for us to come together with people who have what it takes to change this country. What are the signals? Do you see that as a threat to you? Are you getting the signals, uh, you know, the green light for bringing the ANC onto the city? Well, if, if these people believe that they want to help this country and they respect it as a rebel, the best way to change it as a rebel now is to come through the coalition of democratic change on the stewardship of Dr. George. Let me, let me ask you this question. You know the way uh, we politic in this country, and especially the president alluded to that when he arrived from out of the country, that uh, for peace to come into this country, all of us have to behave responsibly. And one thing the president struck was that uh, he, though he did not say Cummins' name, but it was a swipe at him that uh, he sat there when uh, uh, one of his officials were running insults, you know, and, and stuff like that. You have this vitriolic language coming from all over. As Secretary General, how do you how do you approach? What kind of strategy are you going to use when the other side is mudslinging, you know, cussing ma, cussing pa, and all of that? How do you approach this kind of politics? as a young Secretary General coming. Well, we'll say to you, we're not debauch all of our tactics and strategies. Will you cuss back? Well, basically, you got to, you see, in this politics, you got to ask, you got to utilize what your results. Everybody has their own thinking, their own strategy. Okay. If people think that being very abusive is a strategy that you use, uh, you have your audience. But I will continue to utilize what I've been using to make them successful. Mr. Secretary General, you just uh, struck a point. You said you're contemplating bringing the ANC to the Congress for Democratic Change. And uh, the ANC leader wants nothing more but to be, you know, president of the Republic of Liberia also. What is the deal? Is he coming uh, as a running mate to President Weah or what is the deal? Well, we see uh, wanting to be president is, is is an imagination, and that imagination can be uh, that imagination can be directed in a way, you know, to to reality. So, uh, and I think it's not a wrong thing. Even when the child was growing out, a lot of them would think, "Say, oh, Papa, I won't be this, I won't be that." Mm -hmm. uh, so, even in your old age, when you stay thinking you're supposed to be anything you want to be, uh, the best thing we can do for you is to create an environment. And we say to you is that. Uh, we want him to, uh, the man only him. Yeah, people start thinking, but look at party leaders. You can't have been so selfish, you don't think. He's not the only people. There are people in the ANC. There are features in the ANC also. We think the ANC is in an environment, not just only one person that can. We get, the whole party that come together and get people, one person, you know, ambition. So we want to create a space within the ANC where the ANC can begin to work, not just only one person decision, and say because this man want to be president, so every other person should get compromised and just get away. So we want to say to you, to achieve that, we want to create a working environment, we're working towards all my, my leadership as a secretary general. One of my first approach is to bring the ANC to the coalition for democratic change. What about the unity party? Well, that you can't just make the opposition weak. You can't do that. The unity party can be there in front of. I decide what I want. When you, you want someone, the ANC as a force to reckon with, and you want to break the ANC. Mm, no, you see, we do not have fools here. Our biggest competitor is the Liberian people. We compete with the Liberian people. You know those people. Those people are beneficial of the Liberian people decision. So they cannot compete with us. I am. I am thinking. You see, today I'm reporting, I'm reporting to, the, to my, what you call, my employers. Those are the people who have employed us. We are the, we happen to be their employees. So that is the point. We cannot call, you know, this kind of arrangement, uh, you know, a competitor, no. 
what we are trying to do, I'm trying to ensure, technically speaking, uh, I call uh, 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 Kwame, this president governed this country in a final in just two years. Mm -hmm. Technically speaking, two years leadership and see what we have achieved in two years. In 2018, the first thing we got, we got in God here, we were greeted with perception about 16 billion and all kinds of things we were engaged with that. The other 2019 were greeted with protests and all kinds of things. Okay. 2020, COVID. So, technically speaking, this government had our hands just two years. Just two years you had him. And now today you see see what happened in Babolu, see the, the hospital, and an array of things that we can show. It is those things we will take to the Liberian people and the Liberian people who happen to be our competitors, they will be able to tell us what we deserve and what we deserve an opportunity to stay to where we are, or whether there are other people who can come and perform miracles. Yeah, and I know you tried to dodge this one, and I will bring it back to bring it back to you. Uh, you know they say he, uh, if you want to preach equity, you should come with clean hands. Uh, you think uh, 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 Cummings should fire Louis Brown over the seventy thousand that got missing? And I need you on the answer. Don't don't brush it up. I'll be honest with you. I know many things. I don't think <laughs> instructing Cummings is one of the things I want to apply. It's a, at his level, we want to be something. He should be at the point he might know what is appropriate and what is appropriate for him. At this point in time, I'm concentrating in ensuring. Because you see, in the, in the ANC, you see people can mistake people. Maybe because you have the biggest checkbook. That every other person, there are people in the ANC who have been in opposition for a long period of time. There are people in the ANC who issues are also. We are seeing together if one person's decision cannot be you know, cannot be met at a particular point in time. Can we put the party in the state? Can we put the party in the state where a vast majority of the party say can have some sense, some semblance of hope? Where they can, there are people in the ANC who also take the example. We have people who have political ambition, mm -hmm. representative, all of them. So we are saying we now begin to have a conversation. We will we step out, we will extend. To the ANC, so we can begin to talk. The two ANC people will be willing to talk. The other people are willing to talk. They can decide and follow an individual who will be in the party will follow the party decision. That's what we want to do. Okay, Secretary General Jefferson Tanakoji, we've been having a conversation with you. We want to say thank you. You know, we don't want to eat most of your time in other media institutions. Mm -hmm. We need to. We need to go. Is there anything that we didn't ask you about that you want to talk about that is so important to you? I want to say thank you so kindly. Uh, I want to bless God. I want to wish every one of you a prosperous and a merry Christmas. Have a prosperous new year. Uh, there are things you want to reassure our community that there are laws around the books. Those laws will be revisited and 2023 we will be able to engage the city in a more unique and economic way. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs>